So millions of dollars in both litigation fees and damages aside, what are the stakes of your case versus Dr. Michael E. Mann? And now for the actual facts and not the alternative facts. The case is not versus Michael E. Mann. The case is Michael E. Mann versus Competitive Enterprise Institute, National Review, Mark Stein, and some other clown nobody has ever heard of. It is not against Dr. Mann. Well, I think it's uh, one of the most consequential, the most consequential uh, free speech case. No, he does not think that. Libel and defamation are not free speech, nor are libel and defamation protected by any free speech laws anywhere in the Americas. Stein has already been told this fact by three court judges in Washington, D.C., including the D.C. Court of Appeals. Free speech does protect lying in both Canada and the United States. However, free speech laws do not protect malicious lies that have been published specifically to harm someone. All three court judges have concluded malice exists, and all three court judges have concluded that a jury will likely find the defendants guilty. Uh, in the last half century, if in the event that I were to lose, I'd appeal it. Uh, to the Supreme Court. All three court judges have told Stein that he is likely to lose the libel and defamation case against him. His lawyers must have also told him this fact. It should also be noted that Dr. Michael E. Mann was forced to sue his defendants after the defendants refused to publish an apology. It should also be noted that free speech advocates are on Dr. Mann's side, not the defendant's side. Two of the three court judges have concluded that the libel against Dr. Mann was an attack against Dr. Mann's free speech, not the other way around. Because I think that's the stakes. We would essentially be in a world where uh, juries, courts, but not just judges, but juries would be litigating science. In no way is the civil tort against the defendants an issue of science. Libel, defamation, and slander are not science. No jury in this case will be asked to conclude anything about science. The issue is malice against the victim, not science. Uh, no court anywhere in the common law world um, has been asked to rule upon the validity of a scientific hypothesis. That is non sequitur. No one ever claimed otherwise. The issue is libel and defamation, not science. And for American courts to start doing that would be a disaster for the, for the field of science. Uh, yes, it would be. Fortunately, no court in the United States is doing this, nor likely will they be doing this, even under the Trump regime. But beyond that, it's a matter of public policy. The public policy involved was set centuries ago. Libel, slander, and defamation are against the law. Uh, climate change matters, not... The lawsuit has nothing at all to do with climate change. It has everything to do with malice. Stein has been told this fact literally more than 100 times by all three court judges, as well as by his lawyers. Uh, and that makes it a matter of public policy. And if, if matters of public policy uh, can be dragged into courtrooms and decided by juries. The issue, of course, is not public policy. The issue is libel and defamation, a matter of malice, not policy. Stein knows this fact because all three court judges and his lawyers told him this fact. Let us see what the courts actually had to say on the subject. Quoting District of Columbia Court of Appeals, quote, we conclude that Dr. Mann hurdled the anti-SLAPP statute thresholds showing of likelihood of success on the merits because the evidence he has presented is legally sufficient to support findings by the fact finder that statements in Mr. Simberg's and Mr. Stein's articles were defamatory, were published by appellates to a third party without privilege, and were made with actual malice, end of quote. Quote, we note that in the article, Mr. Simberg does not employ language normally used to convey an opinion, such as, in my view, or in my opinion, or I think. The article's assertion about Dr. Mann's deception and misconduct are stated objectively, as have been shown and revealed by the CRU emails. Thus, Mr. Simberg's article can fairly be read as making defamatory factual assertions outright. End of quote. 
But as I said, Stein knows these facts already, so I am baffled why he would make a video stating the exact opposite of what every court judge has already concluded. It is almost as if he had an agenda to further that is contrary to the truth.